All right, Media Day, 5-5A Division One. We are joined with Kenneth Gilchrist, head coach at Frisco Heritage. Coach, how are you today? And uh, how is the preparation going for spring ball? Uh, doing, doing very well. Uh, we're really excited. We start on Monday at 6 a.m. with our first spring practice. So uh, excited to see what the boys have done. They've worked really hard in off offseason through COVID and all the protocols they've had to follow. And uh, put in some hard work, so we're excited to get those uh, first two days in helmets out of the way and then put the pads on on Wednesday and see what they got, and see some of their, our young kids and see what they're going to bring to the table next year. Excellent. Excellent. It's always a fun time of the year. What's mm-hmm. not a fun time of the year is when you have to throw your team out there against a, a Denton Ryan and a, and a Frisco mm-hmm. Lone Star every year. Talk about how that district is looking this year. I know, I mean, what were you going to do against Ryan last year? Nobody could do anything, so that was – that was just the way it was. But talk about how you feel it, it looks this year. They had a lot of people graduate, and Lone Star had a few graduations. So talk a little bit about how you feel it's going to look. Yeah, like. I still think 5-5A five, five is the, if not the toughest, one of the toughest districts in the state this year. Uh, you know, they did lose a lot at Den Ryan, but their JV was undefeated. So they're just going to bring some more kids up. And, uh, you know, he's doing – Coach Hennigan's doing a great job over there. Uh, they do have some dy- dynamic playmakers back. So, uh, you know, he'll, he'll have some shoes to fill with his son at quarterback and, and the two dudes he had out wide, you know, going to Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, they're, they're players. So, uh, but, and then uh, Coach Rayburn, he does a great job over at Lone Star. Uh, got a ton of kids out, uh, got a ton of playmakers back, you know, and then Garrett Rangel at quarterback, you know, he's one of the best in the state. So they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So uh, from top to bottom, every week in our district, I think it's one of those that, uh, there's not a week you can go in thinking, oh, I think, you know, we can start preparing maybe a little bit for this game or that game. You know, every week's going to be a battle. And uh, we're just hoping we're in the mix at the end. I was going to say those first two spots, I mean, between me and you, let's just say they, they look like they're going to be the same. But right. the second two playoff spots look like it's, a, it's up for grabs for the other seven teams in this district. Yeah. You know, I think it all boils down to uh, who can stay healthy and who can make plays on Friday night or, or Thursday night whenever we're playing, uh, who makes the most plays that night. And uh, staying healthy is the number one key for most of us, uh, you know, because we're not all like Ryan and Lone Star in our district to where we're just loaded with a bunch of kids and we can and we can fill in and there's not a huge drop-off. Uh, for us, you know, numbers is an issue. Uh, our first 22 to 30 kids are really good, but after that, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a younger kid, maybe a freshman or sophomore that's not quite ready to step in. That's the next guy for us. You talk about your younger guys, but you had – and it seems to be a deal at Heritage where it's like this a lot. Your offensive game plan and your offensive pl- skill position players are, are top-notch. Uh, yeah. You know, with Kane about ready to get drafted in the, oh, NFL, yeah. in the NFL this coming yeah. couple, this coming week. But this last year you had three juniors – three. Uh, they were right at the top of the stats page, mm-hmm. all a quarterback, wide receiver, running back. Maybe you could talk about those three guys and how sure. you hope they will uh, get you guys into a playoff spot this year. Oh, yeah. You know, Easton, Easton's uh, our signal man back there, and uh, he's done a great job at quarter, quarterback. He works extremely hard at his craft. He's uh, one of the first ones in the field house in the morning, uh, one of the last ones to leave. Uh, he's not only working with a football in his hand, but he's working on the board. He's working on watching film. Uh, he, he's uh, another coach on the field for us. So it makes it really easy for us to call plays because he's seeing stuff that we see. Uh, so it, it's nice having him back there. Uh, did a really good job from sophomore to junior year. We're excited to see what he's going to do this year. I mean, he spent a ton of time in the weight room. He's put on 10 or 15 pounds. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten faster. We're anxious to see what he's going to do as well. He's a deceptive runner. So I think with a little bit extra weight he's got, he's going to be able to do a little bit more than he even did last year. And then uh, Karsten's our speed guy. You know, he's a legit 4-4 kid. He can blow the top off of just about any coverage. Uh, he got behind just about every team we played. Uh, just sometimes, you know, we might not have had time to get it to him when he did blow the top off. So our line's got to do a little bit better job of giving us a little more time. Uh, but he's a dynamic go-getter. Uh, he can he can run the deep route really well and catch the ball really well. He had over 800 yards receiving as a, as a junior. We're anxious to see what he does this year. Another kid that spent a lot of time in the weight room. And then uh, at running back, really our captain of our team, uh, we go as he goes, is Sean Wara. 
Uh, that dude is uh, one of the hardest working kids. I, I've been doing it for 23 years, and I, I've yet – I think he might be the hardest working kid that I've ever coached. And I've coached at some places like Lake Travis and Duncanville. And, but Sean is a kid that he's not afraid to work and he's not afraid to put his body in harm's way. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a kid that we're looking for big things on both sides of the ball. We're going to play him a little bit more on defense this year because we think his body's ready for it and he's put some extra work in. Uh, but he's a punishing runner. But he's also got some speed at the end to, to take care of business. So, And then we've got, you know, Bryce Gilchrist is another one. You know, he was a kid that we had to play a quarterback uh, two, for two of the first games of the season when Easton got hurt. Uh, so he had over 500 yards receiving. But you take two games out that he played a quarterback, he's probably got seven or 800 himself. And then he missed the last game of the year because of COVID. So, you know, he only really played five games at receiver and had over 500 yards receiving. So we, we have a couple of guys on both sides of our receiving core that hopefully uh, will help Sean run the ball a little bit better. You guys, you talk about uh, the offense and you're putting up crazy numbers. Unfortunately, defensively, you're, you're letting up crazy. You know, you know, yeah, you know yeah. I think it was an average of half a hundred. Now that may be attributed to the numbers that you don't have a lot of guys that you can get out there, but yeah. what can you do defensively to, to – you know, at least hold them down to 25 a game, and, and then that way you can just outrun them. On the, on yeah, the that, that's what we're hoping. You know, what we're hoping to do a little bit, what we're really concentrating on uh, pre-spring and then sp moving into spring ball is uh, we're not blessed with a lot of a lot of size, so we're going to do a good job of moving our kids around, trying to make it a little tougher on those offensive lines and not getting their hands on our defensive line who, who are a little bit undersized. Uh, we're going to use our quickness to our advantage, and then we're going to be very multiple in coverages. Uh, going to blitz a little bit more. Uh, it's really not what we like to do. We like to look like we're going to blitz, but not. But we're going to bring a lot more pressure and, and gamble a little bit more on that side and try to see if it pays off for us. So they'll be calculated and, and, and studied. But we're going to try to gamble just a little bit more and bring a little bit more pressure. I guess finally, talk about the struggles that can be in a 19 district where you only got those two games to get yourself ready for district play. Yeah, it's a huge struggle for us because, you know, you, you like to work some kids and, and move them around and see them play a few different positions. But, uh, you know, what we talk about as a staff is we've got to be ready to go that first scrimmage. We can't be playing with a lot of stuff early and seeing if this work or this might work and, and play this kid at right tackle or play him over here at left guard. or You can't really do that. You have to be firing on all cylinders from the get-go because, uh, like I said, when we, when we walk out there the first district ball game against Lone Star, I mean, that's a huge game for playoff implications right off the bat, and that's week number three. So uh, we don't have a lot of time to mess around and try different things. It's got to be uh, all hands on deck and everybody in the position that we feel best suits a team from day one. Excellent. Well, hey, I wish you luck this season. Uh, hope, thank you for joining us. I hope you get a couple, couple more wins to get a run at that last playoff spot or one of the last two. Yes, sir. We appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for what you do for football. No problem, thank you.